Hello, everyone, and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery. I'm your host, Rachel Leroy, and this is the Christian Emotional Recovery YouTube channel. I also have a podcast with the same name. You can check those out in the show notes, and you can also, if you'd like, go to Facebook and check out Trauma Survivors Unite Christian Emotional Recovery, where I also have a community of folks like you Christian and non-Christian alike, all are welcome, and we provide a community of support. It is Christian-informed. We do talk about God's role in all of this, but everybody is welcome, and I do have some non-believers in the group, and that's fine. Um, I'm here to help everybody. That's my job, to help anybody. I'm not going to turn you away because of what you believe. I believe in loving everybody. Okay, so everybody's welcome on all my channels. Also, check out my Facebook um, page, which provides weekly support and memes. And check out the Instagram. A lot of some of this overlaps. And also, check out my store, which I'm putting more products for Christian Emotional Recovery. I also have a writing course store, if you're interested in learning about writing. But the store is right now at rachelleroy.podia, P-O-D-I-A dot com. It may change, so if it does, if the link doesn't go there, go to the um, show notes and it'll have an updated link. And if that doesn't work, check out my channels and you'll find it somewhere on there, okay? So also, if you want to support this ministry, I don't really call myself a ministry per se, I'm kind of casual. I don't like to use a lot of religious jargon and terminology. I, I just find that it can be off-putting and it doesn't really accomplish anything. But um, if you want to support what we do, um, what Christian Emotional Recovery does, I will be honest. I struggle with paying for this stuff. I struggle with finding the time and the energy to do it. If I'm a little out of breath and my voice is a little... Um, raspy. It's because I've been recording videos. I do several at a time and then post them, stagger them out. So, but you can support this work that I do and help other trauma survivors and allow me to be able to continue to do this because like you, I have to make a living and I do teach part-time, but it's not enough along with my husband's salary always. So, I'm trying to build a store to help offset that. And one thing that you can do, though, is go to Patreon, and you can support at any point from $5 per month on up. And that helps me to be able to continue doing this ministry and to help other people who are trauma survivors like you. It, it's greatly appreciated. It means so much, and it's such a privilege to be able to do this. This is my life's work, and I want to be able to do it full-time one day. And every step that I can take in that direction allows me to be able to do that. And when I do, I'll be able to do even more and provide even more resources and services both paid and free. The, the podcast will always be free. The YouTube channel will always be free. The Facebook group will always be free. But I would like to eventually maybe open a membership site, maybe, and um, create courses and um, put more stuff in the store, among other things as well. So check that out. Um, this episode, we're talking about nine pitfalls that can make healing difficult and what to do instead. Nine pitfalls that can make healing hard or difficult and what to do instead. And um, I got, um, I used an article that I will put in the show notes um, to cite. I didn't actually get the idea straight from there. It just sort of gave me indirect ideas, but I still want to credit this article because I want to make sure that sources, direct, indirect, or even third party are always credited in my work. I teach English, so I have a strong opinion about citing sources and giving credit to the authors. It's about ethics and integrity. But um, um, I did a um, YouTube video last year, and it was about um, things that can derail your healing, things that um, reinforce trauma and can actually slow down your healing process. And if you want something similar, it's not exactly the same. I will put that, I can't remember what the video is called, but I will put that video in the show notes and you can um, see that video as well to get more context. It's a little bit different than this one, so it's not just repeating. I, it was something about how you're going through the healing process specifically and ways that people re-traumatize themselves without meaning to because healing is tricky. And this one is more like the overall mindset that you have towards your healing that can make healing difficult, not just derail your healing and what to do about it instead. So, um, nine strategies, nine pitfalls that you can make that can make healing hard. The first one is forcing the healing. When you're going through this healing process, 
You don't want to force the healing. Don't try too hard. Okay, it's hard work, but that's different than trying too hard. Does that make sense? Don't chase down and force up issues to heal. I'm reading off of an article on my computer. My phone's up here, so bear with me. Don't go digging for every little thing. Now, when you're looking at healing, you may do some digging, and that's fine. But I'm saying don't go chasing down every little thing you can find. Every little emotion that comes up, you don't have to analyze it and examine it and overthink it. It depends on the context. Instead, allow things to come up. They are going to come up on their own anyway. And I'm not saying never dig. I'm just saying be wary of that. Let it come up and then deal with it. That's um, sometimes, especially at first when this stuff is really sensitive and it's really difficult and you really have a lot of unhealed trauma, that's the best way to do it at first, okay? So forcing the healing is one thing you don't want to do and it can derail your healing. Number two, trying to take on too much at once in your healing journey. Trying to take on too much at once. Don't try to take on the whole issue at once. Don't try to take on too much at once because you do a little bit at a time. Yard by yard, life is hard. Inch by inch, life's a cinch. It's so corny, but it's a, it's a true saying and it's very helpful to remember that. Um, over time, your healing will add up. If you set a big giant goal and you break it down into a um, short-term goal, which can be measured in weeks or months, and then you break that down into many goals, which are maybe daily, then it becomes possible to see the bigger picture and you don't give up and become intimidated and fall on your face. So... Um, don't chase some unattainable mirage that you are, it's going to take a long time to get to. Instead, set small goals or deal with a little bit of your trauma at a time, just a little bit. Because over time, it does add up and you do start to see the results over time as you do it consistently, a little bit at a time, daily, okay? So number two is don't try taking on too much at once. Number three of nine pitfalls that can make healing hard and what to do instead. Punishing yourself because you're not completely healed. I did this one for so long. It was an unconscious thing. And I still struggle in some areas. I still struggle in the area of finances and not understanding why God has not helped me in some of those ways when I work. I've worked for things that I don't even have. Like, that's been my pattern. I work for something and it just falls through. Even like concrete jobs. Um, I won't get into that, but it, that's a pattern that I struggle with still. So there are things that we can still struggle with, but I've made so much progress in self-love, in not punishing myself because I'm not completely healed. Don't deny yourself joy and contentment now. Just because you aren't exactly where you want to be doesn't mean you don't deserve to be happy and to have good things now. You do. Don't chase some unattainable mirage of, I'll be happy when... It sounds so cliche, but it's so true. Um, the Bible constantly talks about contentment. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or um, hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Now, that's a hard verse to accept when you're at the beginning of your healing journey, trauma-wise, but the longer you stick with it, the more it begins to make sense and unfold experientially in terms of how much it makes sense. That you deserve to be happy now. That you deserve to have peace now. And that it shouldn't be something where if you hit this goal, or if you do this, or if you're healed, or if this or this. Chasing happiness is the last way you'll find it. It's so messed up. I wish chasing happiness did make you happy. But the fact is, is... Being where you're at, accepting where you're at, being kind to yourself where you're at is actually what brings contentment. And maybe it's more of a slow burn and it's not this it just, oh, life-altering transformation. It's more like just, hmm, you, you see what I'm saying? It's We live in a society where we have these unrealistic expectations about happiness, and that's not really how it works. It's more about contentment and about stability and about peace and about good things and about that warm, slow, that warm, slow burn, okay? So while it is partly a trauma response of wanting to things to happen now, I do understand, believe me, 
doing the work steadily a little bit day by day is doable. Whereas the other just, it, it doesn't work. It does not work, period. And it will make you miserable and you will get nowhere. But it allows you to have contentment now, seeing the small steps adding up over time in the progress you're making now. And this will keep you focused and motivated on doing the healing work because you get a little victory. It encourages you. So you move forward and you get another victory and it encourages you and it's realistic. And um, again, yard by yard, life is hard and inch by inch, life's a cinch. It's corny, but it's true. I'm sorry, I'm really tired, so bear with me. I've been talking nonstop for three hours. So um, I do these in bulk, the videos, because it saves time and it's really the only way I can work it into my schedule. So bear with me, okay? Number four, focusing on the problem instead of the solution. Easy to do, I do it all the time, I'm guilty of it all the time. Focusing on the problem instead of the solution. But when you notice it, don't beat on yourself. Just come back to focusing on the solution instead. Focus on the result you're looking for, not... You, you see what I'm saying? Don't make trauma or even trauma healing your whole identity. I'm bad about that. And we're going to do a podcast on that at some point. So if you're reading this, listening to this later on... You might want to go search out and see if I actually made that episode because I do plan on making one on making trauma your identity. Last year during the podcast, I was getting bogged down a little bit and I think that might have been happening to me. So when I find an experience, I assume that there's hundreds of other people having the same experience. Human nature is human nature. So I want to talk about that. Um, it's so easy to focus on the problem instead of the solution. It is a trauma response, and it's not your fault. Again, don't condemn yourself, kick yourself, hit yourself, and hate yourself for doing that. It's normal. But when you get on the healing path, it can be easy to go down a rabbit hole on focusing on narcissistic abuse, the abuser. You did this to me. They did this to me. And it can seem contradictory that I'll get all up in arms about abusers and perpetrators and um, power struggles between people where somebody's taking advantage of their power. But it's so easy to become obsessed and let that become your identity. Don't. You're a full 3D human being with loves and interests and a family and or friends. And maybe you like um, to you like ballet, going to the ballet, and you like listening to jazz, and you like to jog, and you love um, rabbits. I mean, you like Maserati cars. You're obsessed with Britney Spears. I don't know, but everybody has this wide array of unique qualities, and whatever yours are, that's part of who you are, too. Your character, your sense of humor, your spirit, your moral character. You, you know, how you take care of yourself, what you do every day. There's so much more to life than just that. And so I don't want this to just be all you ever do. Go out and enjoy life. Build relationships. Have fun. Be a person. And enjoy now. Allow yourself to enjoy life now. Laugh at things. Have fun. For so long, I wouldn't let myself do that. And now, just in the last two years, I, for some reason, out of nowhere, have had this... I have like this contagious cackle of a laugh and I didn't have it before. And it's because of all the healing work I've done. I have can uncover entire layers of my identity. I didn't even know existed. I didn't know I had that. I have a, a gift of intuition. I'm not talking about psychic, but like I can read people like a book. It's a curse and a gift, but I couldn't do that four years ago and I can do it now. You know why? Because I healed and also because I know there's parts of me besides that thing that happened to me. So you don't get yourself so caught up in this. You can't get away from it for a while. You can't have an identity outside of it and you can't think about anything else. Trauma survivors will obsess and ruminate. Do not beat on yourself for that. That's normal. But if you can allow yourself to forget for a while, if you can enjoy life, if you can build those other parts of yourself, I don't know, build a puzzle, go to a movie, you know, do things that you enjoy. Binge on Netflix, go to dinner with a friend. You know, and, and just things like that. Just life, you know. But that's when you have to choose to respond. Because there is power between our the trigger and our reaction. That space in between. Expanding it and choosing what happens here. 
That's where power is. And that's when you get to choose to respond, like I said. Um, so healing trauma is not your only identity and it's not your only job. Your job is also to enjoy life and be good to yourself and be good to other people. Um, I've struggled with that one. Being mindful of this and bringing yourself back to the right focus, you won't get bogged down. Jesus didn't die to give us an abundant life so we could accomplish A, B, and C or go from A, B, and C, A to B. Jesus died for us so we could start living an abundant life now as soon as we accept it. As, as we heal, more abundance will also open up to us and we'll start to experience that full life and that full life and abundance more and more that Christ died to give us. The more you heal, the more you will see that. But you've got to enjoy the journey along the way or you're missing years you can't get back. Don't let that happen, okay? Don't let that happen. Shaming yourself when making mistakes. Number five, shaming yourself when you make mistakes. If you do something like go down an anger rabbit hole, we all do it, say or think something horrible about the abuser, yell at someone or focus on the problem instead of the abuser, um, or focus on the problem instead of the abuser. It's easy to beat on yourself in these situations, but the point of power is in the time, like I said, between the trigger and the reaction. And that's when you get to choose to respond right in here, in that space in between, right? So when you realize you've made a mistake and you feel bad, it's okay to feel bad about it. Let yourself feel bad for a moment. You're not going to hear that very often. Let yourself feel bad. Feel bad about it. But don't wallow in it and don't stay there. Don't condemn, condemn yourself for mistakes or for feeling bad. Then you're layering it and it just makes it worse. Just let the feelings be there. Don't wallow in them. You might even do the acorn process on it. Um, check out my other videos if you want to know what the acorn process is. But most importantly, forgive yourself. While everyone needs to take accountability and make things right with anyone you've wronged, everybody makes mistakes. Cut yourself some slack. That's number five. Shaming yourself when you make mistakes. Number six of nine pitfalls that can make healing hard and what to do about it is try being happy, trying to be happy all the time. Just because you want just because I want you to enjoy your life now does not mean you should try to be happy all the time. It's not realistic. If you're a trauma survivor, you're going to have some rough days. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay. Thinking you should feel good and happy all the time when you're on the healing path is just unrealistic. You're going to feel crummy some of the time. Heck, sometimes you're going to feel crummy a lot of the time. And it's how you choose to respond to it that matters. It's okay not to feel great all the time. And when you don't feel great, remind yourself. You don't have to wallow in it. If you can feel better, choose to feel better. Don't just stay there. But if you find that you're struggling to feel better, then sometimes just accepting it and just saying, okay, I don't feel great today. And just be kind to yourself. Be extra kind to yourself and accept that. That's okay. That's okay. Number seven, believe reading the Bible, praying, going to church, and having enough faith alone can heal you. They can't. Yeah, there, I said it. I said it. Um, I'll say it again. Believing, reading the Bible, praying, going to church, having enough faith with willpower alone can heal you. They can't. Willpower does not heal emotions. Faith does not heal trauma most of the time. Now, I do believe there are exceptions, okay? So don't bash me for that. But usually, God heals us when we walk it out and we do the daily work. We do the meditations. We go to the therapist. We write in the journal. We talk it out. That's how we do the work. We do the examining. We get to the body, the somatic source of the trauma, and release it a little bit at a time. That's how you heal trauma. Faith is what allows you to be able to continue to do that every day, though. God is who gives you those gifts to heal. Scripture is where you find the wisdom to get context with all of this and to remember who you are in Him. Okay? So it's not like it's just pointless to believe and to do these things, but healing is something that God does through miracles sometimes, but usually He gives us the tool to walk out healing over time. 
This is still the power of the Holy Spirit at work, guiding us and providing us with what we need to heal when we seek therapy, when we reprogram our mind, when we target healing in the body somatically. And these are the therapies that can be used in conjunction with prayer, church, scripture, etc., which can contribute to healing in conjunction with strategies that target the trauma at its source. So that's number seven, believing all those things and willpower alone will heal you. Okay, number eight, caring more what others say about your healing journey than God and the Holy Spirit do and what you think. I'll say it again, caring more what others say about your healing journey than what God or the Holy Spirit say and what you think. Um, so this is an easy pitfall because many of us have experienced narcissistic abuse, trauma, and childhood emotional neglect, and we have codependency. Codependency means you're a people pleaser and you care more about what other people think and feel than what you think and feel. And that means we're prone to people pleasing, ignoring our emotions and instincts, and not trusting ourselves. But we need to learn more to think about what's right for us regardless of what other people think. We can be kind to people without being people pleasing and also ignoring our instincts and not trusting ourselves, you gotta, you gotta listen to your instincts. You gotta trust yourself. We surrender our agency to the judgment of others and feel guilty for setting healthy boundaries. But having that agency is what allows our choices to be genuine and to be authentic in Christ. And setting healthy boundaries is what allows us to be able to live every day in a balanced way and to accomplish anything. If we push ourselves and we try to please everybody, we will burn out, we will be mad at ourselves, we will hate ourselves, and we will not heal. Part of the healing journey is learning to set loving and kind and balanced boundaries. It's learning to listen in an authentic way to what you need and to who you are and to follow Christ over what other people think of you. People pleasing, nah, doesn't do anything. Easier said than done, I know. I've struggled with it myself. But as you get more f further into the healing journey, it will be something that you care less about. Even though you'll always care some, you'll care less about it. And it's freeing to not give a crap what people think feels so good. It's so wonderful, okay? I mean that in a healthy way, yeah. Number nine, ha not having a regular practice. So the last pitfall that can make healing hard and what to do instead is not having a regular practice. Having some kind of, you cannot just sit back and pray and say, God, heal me. I, it, it could happen. It could happen. But you've got to work towards what it is that you want to do. Daily reprogramming your mind. Daily doing the healing, releasing of the trauma. Daily working on yourself or weekly, a few times a week. A regular practice Having some kind of daily or several times a week practice ensures you reprogram your mind and your healing sticks. It's the only way you'll heal, and it's the only way your healing will stick unless God does heal you instantly, which is rare, okay? Experimenting and seeing what works for you, learning and trying new strategies, and being open-minded about what might work ensure you are able to see recovery happen on a larger scale over time. Emotional recovery is difficult, even grueling at times. I won't lie. I don't lie to people here. I think love tells the truth. Um, so you can, um, you have to be in it for the long haul. If you're not in it for the long haul, if you don't accept the nature of the process can be difficult. If you're not committed to doing it day after day after day, we all fall off of the wagon sometimes. I'll go a couple of months and slack on my meditations and I'll do them once in a while. And I'm like, I need to get back to that. When you do realize that, don't beat on yourself. Just come back. Sometimes you may need to take a break. Maybe you're saying, I'm going to take a break for two weeks and I'm not going to do any of this work. And then you come back. Sometimes taking a break is actually what you need, but you keep at it and you do it regularly. Sometimes it's slowly, sometimes it's slow, but healing can and does happen. Okay? So that is nine pitfalls that can make healing hard and what to do instead. I hope that this has been helpful for you. Like I said, if you want to support the podcast and the YouTube channel and make them continue to be to be here, because like I said, I, I did, I'm struggling right now. Honestly, I'm exhausted. But um, um, Patreon is one way you can do that. 
Um, I'll put the link below the Patreon. You can support anywhere from $5 a month on up. You can also purchase things at the store that will benefit you and also help fund the podcast and allow me to pay for it because there are expenses involved with the platform, the website, the um, podcast itself, the media that I use, um, tools and resources and software, a lot of things. They do cost money, so I appreciate any support you can provide either way. And if you want to make an individual donation, contact me and we can talk about that as well. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Remember that this journey is tricky and it's simple and yet complicated. And um, so I just like to give you insights that other people aren't talking about because these are things that I've learned on my own journey. I have a gift of insight, I believe, that God has given me to find these like little things like this. And so I like to use the gifts that God has given me to be able to help you. So thank you. I so thank God for these gifts. And I also want to convey what I see in insights to you so that they can help you to learn from my years of work so you can get there faster and it's easier for you. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made and God loves you.